Hi everybody, welcome to Wise Kong Driving and today we're having a quick look at the Kia Cerato 1.6 Well, this car was last facelifted in 2016 and it is sold by NASA Alright, and this is actually a cousin of the Hyundai Elantra Okay, uh, in terms of looks it still looks pretty good uh, it's 2019 now and three years down the road uh, we are testing the car why because i have never tested the car and secondly uh, our viewers asked us to check this car out so out of curiosity i sent a note to nasa and they gave me this car at very short notice now, in terms of size, uh, this car is actually a C-class sedan. Why? Because the wheelbase is 2700mm. So, this is exactly the same wheelbase. Okay, wheelbase is the distance between the center of the front wheel to the center of the rear wheel. Yeah, And this wheelbase of 2700 is the same wheelbase as in the Master 3, the old Master 3, not the new Master 3. And also, the exactly the same as in the Honda Civic so this is the same class of car as those and uh, the only difference it is it has a 1.6 liter engine but it also has a six-speed automatic gearbox and there are three driving modes so at a price of 103,888 ringgit it's not selling in as many numbers as one would think so we need to go and check this car out today we are in the Kia Cerato 1.6 yeah now this car was launched in 2013 and uh, it went through a facelift in 2016 and now it's 2019 the new model is about to come out, we don't know exactly when, but I would say it's sometime this year. So we are doing this because our viewers asked us to check this car out and uh, actually I was wondering why, but I'm beginning to see why I should check this one out. This is a 1.6 litre. Double OA cam engine with 130 PS and 157 newton meters of torque. And uh, is there enough power for this car? Yes, there's enough. But uh, strangely, this is a C segment sedan, yeah, with a length of uh, 4450 mm and also a wheelbase of 2700 mm. It falls into the category uh, that is in the Altis and in the Honda Civic and also the Mazda 3. So it's actually a C segment car with a B plus segment engine because nowadays it's very difficult to find a C segment car with a 1.6 litre naturally aspirated engine. So uh, we're going to check whether the 1.6 engine is enough. Okay. Well, this car has got a 6 speed gearbox, uh, automatic, and uh, it's got pedal shifters too, and uh, its drive is to the front wheels. So with the 130 PS and 157 Newton meters, there seems to be enough uh, power. Okay. And uh, it seems to take the corners quite well. We are on the Karak Highway, and that was a quite a parabolic long turn. Now there are three driving modes. You can have it in Eco, Normal, or Sport. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put it into Sport, which is a simple little button here. Okay, now we're in Sport. Because we're going to get to the favorite part, which is the hill climb part, and that's where we'll check out the handling of the car. Okay, we're very near the junction. So I think you can see already the car left. 
let's see some do some very spirited driving and here we are at the exit okay, there's a motorbike in there so we'll just proceed with motion okay he's keeping to one side Yes, we are in the Kia Cerato 1.6 and we're going to check out the handling and the driving of this car on this very nice stretch of road. Okay, I've, I'm in uh, I'm in sports mode and we are taking the corners at quite a good speed, yeah. Okay, this is a six-speed automatic box with pedal shifts and we are in sport mode. Okay, there's a bit of noise coming from my smart tech. Okay, I locked it up. And here we go. Wow, that car is taking his racing line. Okay, never mind. Here we go. Even in sport mode, the gears will shift up by itself when it's time. Okay, about the seating, uh, the seats are sort of like contoured and there is some side wings. And they hold me actually quite well. These are not racing buckets. Uh, and actually, uh, they are meant for people a little bit bigger than me. But uh, they're quite comfortable. And my body is not moving around, maybe it's because I got my belt on correctly and all that. So it's pretty nice. Okay, we down the second gear. The power is a little bit on the lagging side, but it's actually not bad. And uh, if you really know how to shift your gears, you can make it go. Okay. We are in third gear, we were in third gear. Okay, we're gonna put the plus minus. Okay, so you'll be strictly manual. So just now the gear shifted by itself. Now we are on manual. Okay, a word of the suspension, yeah. Uh, front is a uh, MacPherson struts and the rear is a uh, torsion bar, torsion beam. Okay, we need to put this car to get out of the way. Let's do that here. Climbing up the hill. Front is MacPherson strut, the rear is torsion beam. But the car seems to be doing okay. Suspension is on the comfortable side of firm. Okay, it's uh, quite nice and compliant. Very good for family car. in front of us Okay, wheels are 17 inch and these are Continentals Might get a 
have been caught at the bottom of the hill, but so far it's okay. Thank you. Not bad uh, for a torsion beam suspension. Yeah, nowadays a lot of cars in this category are torsion beam. Yeah, so you can see just now in the corner the seats don't actually hold me very well because uh, they are made for bigger people. Quite good handling, quite neutral. So this is a C-Class sedan uh, with the 2.7 meters uh, wheelbase but it's got a V-Class segment engine uh, being a 1.6 okay uh, giving it a bit of credit it's got 130 PS so it's pretty nice power but is it enough? well I'm driving quite fast as you can see and uh, for the average man in the street uh, will the one 6 be enough? Yeah, it's enough. You can drive it uh, slowly uh, at the normal speeds of between 90 to 120 and it will be more than adequate. You can also stretch it. I think top speed would be in the region of 170, 180. I don't know. I haven't hit the top speed yet. But uh, this is 6 speed gearbox so the ratios are quite close and gear shifts are quite seamless as you can hear it won't be the fastest car on the block but it's enough for you to have fun if you want to and uh, on, a, on, a, <laughs> on a day to day basis you can enjoy uh, what you call uh, economical driving uh, when I got the car, it showed an average consumption of 8.9 Then I reset the meter and I got 8.9 Then it went to 9 And now with uh, spirited driving is 9.1 meters per 100 kilometers Okay, that means for every 100 kilometers, you take 9.1 meters of fuel Which is not bad, 9.1 meters, maybe about 19 cents a kilometer uh, based on today's price yeah it's not too bad of course if you drive it really slow you can get quite good fuel consumption but uh, well we need to have a bit of fun okay so this is the 1.6 liter engine and we are on the way down the hill Sport mode, you can see that the car is quite spirited and it actually handles quite well. Okay, power is a little bit under, but once you get it moving, it's quite okay.
quite a good account of yourself. There's a bit of a lightening radius, but it's very slight. And you can do the sharp left hander going uphill. Okay, we're in third gear. It's too, too fast for a second. And a little small hint of understeer, but not an issue.
car lock system also senses when you're near it sort of primes the lock and opens up the wing mirrors yeah? uh, without opening the door of course and so it's ready for you to just put your hand on the door handle and press the two button and the door opens okay so all in all this is a pretty nice car i'm just surprised why people are not buying it is it because they think it's a small car because of the 1.6 liter engine or are they not used to having a 1.6 liter engine in a C segment car so anyway uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more yeah bye